Over the last few months, you guys may or may not have seen, we've been twin turbo swapping this NA chassis, and now this 300ZX is boosted. Now one of the biggest things when you do boost a car, at least that wasn't supposed to be boosted, an example, your ECU isn't gonna be able to control the boost because it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. Well, you're gonna need one of these. And today we're gonna to be installing this Gretti Profec into the Z so we can effectively manage and control our boost and keep it at levels that are safe for our power goals. So basically this is a high compression twin turbo setup. So we need to limit the boost probably around 10 to 12 PSI to keep it good, at least for our clutch that's rated to 400 foot pounds of torque. And here is our beautiful unit. Man, that looks so nice, doesn't it? Basically for us to install this, we're gonna need about 20 to 25 foot of some vacuum hose. Three and a half millimeters fine, but four is ideal. So we're gonna take this unit all separately and set it to the side, because realistically we don't need that until we're actually done. So here we've got our little controller box with our vacuum port. You've got your mount to hook up to your Gretti, as well as the extra wiring to go into the engine bay so we can connect it to this Mac valve, because this is effectively what's going to be relieving the boost from your system so you can achieve your desired boost. Also comes with a few hoses and whatnot. This is probably for the inside of the car. So now we get to dive into the vacuum routing portion of this. So basically, you're gonna be putting a vacuum source on the charge pipe of your turbo, which is the air coming into your turbo, and you're also gonna put one on your wastegate for your turbo. So here on the 300ZX, you've got these inlet pipes, and if you look right there, there is your vacuum source for your charge pipe. This is the air going in to your turbo. But since we're twin turbo and we have a turbo on each side, we're actually gonna have to tee these connections into each other. So both of your charge pipes are gonna come back here and you're gonna tee them together right here. So both of your charge pipes run into a T that you can then feed a secondary line into that MAC valve. And the same thing goes down for here on your waste gates. You're gonna to want to run lines from your waste gates back here, teeing into the rear, so that way you can have both of those connections teed into one to run to your MAC valve. Now, when you do tee both of those connections, there's one crucial thing that you must do, and that is to make sure that those vacuum hoses are the exact same length. While all this is super hard to get to, take the time and make them lines exactly the same. So say if you run one, pull it out, have it zip tied on the line so you know about where it goes, and then plug it into the other side, see if that zip tie lines up in the same place in the middle, and if not, lengthen it accordingly to achieve that exact vacuum hose length. Now when you tee both of these into each other, there's going to be an exact place on your MAC valve that it goes into. There's going to be a certain port on each side here. Nothing goes in here, but you have this one and two port on the side. So we're actually gonna hook our charge pipe T up to the first port on the MAC valve, which is here on the right. Two over here is gonna go to your waste gates. So here on this unit, it's actually not put together. So we have these two threaded fittings right here that we're going to have to tighten in that have some thread tape on it or Teflon tape, whatever. Go about hand tight till it quits turning. This is something I would hate to strip or you know mess up any threads on. Before we plumb it in, we actually have this little bracket that it came with, and we're gonna mount this to it. You can see we've got two little screw holes back here, which there's actually supplied bolts and hardware for that. But if you look at this connector, you can actually slide it on this tab and lock it into place so it's in a fixed position. So I don't know what I did with my metric set. But here with my standard set, it appears to be like a quarter inch. No, never mind. 330 seconds. So it's probably going to be like a one or two millimeter. So I did actually mount it over there to the battery bracket or the battery wire bracket. But I decided it would be better to do it over here so we can run it through this little access hole behind the NA Clutch Master. There should be a little hole above that I know the connector can just fit through. And then we can also run our vacuum hose that's gonna to go to our fuel pressure regulator through there as well. Now, if we were gonna use it on the passenger side, we would probably dremel out a little spot down on the AC drain 
So that way we could put like a grommet in there, obviously paint it up and whatnot, so that way it doesn't rust. And then you can kind of feed whatever you want through there and make that, you know, as big as needed. My other option would be to run it here and maybe relocate this down inside of the fender well. Just pull the bracket out, feed the connector through and, you know, plug it back in. We'll see, maybe we'll do that. So that way we don't have this valve just facing straight up. So now we're gonna hook up this port right here, port one to our charge pipe. I can't entirely say it's as crucial to have both of these lines the exact same length. You can just to be safe. So we actually ended up moving it over here and we disconnected this and we're gonna do what we were mentioning, mainly because I wasn't a fan of how close that nipple right here was to this. So we're gonna come back and put hose clamps on obviously, but let's go ahead and hook the other one up. So we're gonna hook the wastegate T up to port two on the valve. One thing that I personally like about running a smaller vacuum hose than the actual nipple itself is that it's so tight on there like it's impossible to have a boost leak. So even though it's super tight on there and impossible to come off, we're still going to put a hose clamp on it. So now our MAC valve is officially all plumbed. The only thing we have to do is connect it and run that through the firewall. So back here, we'll just pull all this tar out. I assume it was open at one point and someone used this to close it off. There should actually be like a plastic grommet inside. Yuck. You're gonna take this connector or extension harness, whatever. This is what plugs into your Mac valve. So we're gonna run and feed this one through that hole. So we're gonna run that down, pull it back kind of behind everything so it's not in the way of the pedals. And we're gonna route that back kind of behind the dash here so we can feed it up here behind the radio. I do need to get everything set up where you guys can see better in the car. So let's do that. Now that you can see a little bit better, we've got our wiring poked through here. If you look up at the top, you can see about where we got the wiring through. There's a little round grommet that you kind of have to pop back, especially if it's a manual car. Factory manual that is, because it's kind of like a dust boot more or less. So when you kind of push that back, you'll have to pry it back and you can feed it through. So that's where we're gonna run our vacuum source as well, but we're not gonna go over that until we get to the fuel pressure regulator portion. So basically we're just gonna take this, we're gonna route it up, maybe above the brake pedal. If not, we'll just kinda strap it to this lower HVAC vent. We're gonna run it back and feed it underneath of here. We're just gonna pull this up here generically. So here's our control box. You can go ahead and plug this in if you want. I'm going to choose not to uncoil all this wiring, which you can do whatever you want with it. So that way you can route it wherever you want. Basically, you're going to have one of these that plugs into your actual boost controller itself. Into this plug. And then this other one is actually the power in the ground to power this. Since they have their own individual harnesses, we're just going to tuck this back here. So now we need to grab us a vacuum hose that's supplied in the kit and hook this up and we're gonna run it to follow that same wiring harness and it's gonna come out here and go up to our fuel pressure regulator. So we're gonna use the supplied hose, but we're actually gonna cut it, I don't know, maybe a couple inches in. And we're going to install this filter so that way any of the reference air coming to the controller is completely clean and it's not gonna actually clog up the controller or the sensor or anything. These are a must, they're like five, 10 bucks if you don't have one and you bought a used kit. Now it is strictly preference where you want the filter, but I just made like a little six inch jumper hose so I can put the filter and have it up here. Now I did check this and I don't see any directional indication that it only filters one direction. So I'll install that and then we'll hook up our other end of our vacuum hose. Once we get that vacuum line routed up here, we can grab the T that was supplied in our kit. And pretty much what we're gonna use here is we're gonna T this in right here with our fuel pressure regulator and a vacuum source to our manifold. Something a little bit like that. So basically I just left it kind of long, keep it out the way so there's still access to the dipstick and so that the hose actually keeps itself out of the way. So with that vacuum source all hooked up, we're officially done up here in the engine bay. But before we actually sit down in the car, we're gonna wire up this power wire and ground wire. So basically we're gonna put a ring terminal on the ground so we can connect it to the chassis. 
And then for the power wire, we're going to take one of these wire fly tabs. Basically, we're going to be putting whatever one on the end, likely this red one, which is just a spade that's shielded. And then we're going to use whichever one of these for the size wire that we're going to tap into to get our 12 volt source. It's basically just a vampire clip so we can pull a little bit of current to power our boost controller. So since this wire is so thin, we're going to make it kind of long so we can double it up. Make sure we got enough wire to grab onto this eyelet. We're going to fold it over, probably twist it again, and one final time. The stuff's like hair. <laughs> it's so thin. Now I've got a ground eyelet. Since it's so small, we'll just use a red. That ain't going nowhere. And now we can install. So back here in the very back, there's actually a 10 mil screw that is the ground for your head unit. So basically underneath that 10 mil screw back here, we're just going to add our ground to this. So we can just tap in and share the same ground since there's already a screw, but if not, just find a good one on any good metal contact. Sand off the paint if there is any paint. So now that our ground is hooked up back here, we're going to take this radio wiring harness and we're going to tap into this blue wire at this top left corner of your plug, which is your accessory wire. So that way we can get a 12 volt source when we turn the key and turn the car on. So basically we don't tap into the yellow and cause it to be on all the time. And that's where we're going to use that vampire clip. So then we can tap in with this and feed off of that. Tap into it with your power wire. Now we're going to take the connector over here. And we're going to plug it into our actual box back here. And then we're going to plug this into that box as well. My apologies, it's not the box. It's the actual wiring harness coming out of the box. So we haven't put the actual stand over here on the unit yet, but now that everything's plugged in, it should, when we turn the key, we should have a power on. Yep, sure enough. Now our unit is powered and it's ready to be tuned. Now I gotta talk with the owner of the car about where I wanna mount it. But a good place to mount it is right down here on your radio bezel. So you can just feed it and pop it through this crack. Kind of modify it a little bit to help it go through without pinching the wires. Or if you have like a post-1991 car, you can mount it up here to keep it in the face or the visual room. In your field of view, not the visual room. Man, I'm on one. But you can also mount it up here on top of your clamshell to keep it centered in between. I can't say we're going to go over how to tune this in this video because the car is still stuck inside and we've had thunderstorm after thunderstorm after thunderstorm around here and Matt really cherishes this car and he takes care of it and he doesn't drive it in the rain and stuff so with all the craters and my access through the alley it's not practical for his car but tomorrow everything's supposed to clean her up and I think we're going to be driving it and getting it tuned out and getting it ready for him to pick up at the end of the week. I hope we helped you guys install the Gretti Profec or really just any electronic boost controller in your car because really they're all about the same. They got the same hookups and points. Now if you've got like a standalone ECU, a lot of times they have different inputs and outputs so you can actually tie it in and to like your ECU so it gets live feed of it. So that way it knows what's going on. We're running stock ECU with a chip so we don't have to worry about all that and it's as simplistic as it gets. Sorry for taking so long posting you guys. Um, if you guys haven't already, follow me over on TikTok because I did just make one of those and we're trying to get in there with some of those shorts and whatnot. So we'll see what we can do. Thank you guys for watching. If you didn't, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe down below. You can stay tuned for more content. But as always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.